everybody, Ryan with Fluid Health and Fitness. Today showing you how to do a sideline hip abduction. It's a variation of like a clamshell exercise. A lot of people are familiar with this. What we're trying to do is target the glute med or the lateral uh, sling system of the body. These muscles support the side to side hip orientation. And the med actually is an IR rotator of the femur as well. So it extends, it internally rotates. It also externally rotates based on the orientation of the femur or again, uh, whatever stage of the gait you're in. We're gonna see more ER rotation when it's in flexion and more IR as you go into mid stance. So what we're doing is we're working the IR abduction relationships while your leg would be under load. So that means if I were in the gait cycle, and my leg were coming behind me, my hip would be slightly internal at the femur as my hip goes external, which again is gonna isolate the glute med. And you're gonna see that roughly around mid stance to heal off in the gait cycle. So we want to isolate that to maintain the neutrality of our spine so we don't hike up. We see that as a valgum collapse or a knee driving in when we put load on our leg because we don't have enough stability from our glute med um, as we're shifting weight side to side. So you can do this with an exercise band just like we did with the hip press, with the ER rotation. You can lasso the knees and add additional tension. I find that a lot of people don't need that as they're unstable through their core and as they lift their leg, they're actually dragging their pelvis upward with their femur. So they actually create accessory motion from their lumbar spine rather than fixating the lumbar and then isolating the independent or independent movement of the femur within the socket without moving the whole system. So again, we would set up with proximal distal. We're gonna brace our spine, stabilize our hip and then move the limb within a fixed socket. So for this uh, side, we're demonstrating the right side today. I'm going to take my right hand and stick it under my rib to make sure that I'm hiked up a little bit. So I'm orienting my spine so that it's neutral or centered. I'm going to breathe all the air out, slightly twist in from the right, brace the right glute by squeezing the glute in advance, hiking the left hip so I'm concaved to the left, and then I would turn my toe in and then lift it straight up to the ceiling. The heel is leading. So if I isolate the hip so that it's slightly external, femur slightly internal, so hip on the right would be slightly back of the anatomy on the left side, toe is in and then lift up, you're gonna get a pretty direct line of force into the med. If you overdo it, you're gonna feel your rib imprint into the ground as your spine starts to concave to the right. If your groin starts to drag your pubic bone up with the leg. So we don't wanna see that. We wanna fixate the lumbar, fixate the pelvis, and move the leg independently within that socket. So again, as a quick repeat, all the air out, twist right, suspend left, brace the adjoining segment, lift the leg up, and then again, come down slowly to a count of six. Breath out, pelvic floor, twist right, suspend left, brace, lift the leg, and then come back down slowly. Breath out, pelvic floor, twist right, brace right, suspend left, breathe in, lift, Breathe out, come down slowly, don't let it touch. So if done correctly, you're gonna get a serious burn right here on the side of your butt. Don't let it move into your spine. You're gonna do two sets of 20 repetitions. Uh, for Saturday's class, we would do one side. So again, one side of 20 on the right side, one side of 20 on the left side, and there it is. Questions on it, admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. See you soon.